Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a slider using the Touch GUI library uh, that we've loaded here in P5.js. So if you did not see the first video on how to load it, uh, I would recommend check that out. We also created a button uh, here which when we hold it down it turns our lips red and when we let go it turns it back white. Um, so a reminder you can go to the p5.js website and go to libraries and then scroll down and you can find the link to the touch GUI library. You click that and that will take you to the github with all the documentation. So what I'm going to show you in this tutorial is now how to make a slider. So the first thing I need to do is create a variable which I'm going to call slider. I could call it whatever I want but I'm going to call it slider since that's what the variable is going to be. And as in all our different objects in the touch GUI library I then go into setup and I'm going to assign the slider object to this variable that I just made so I can refer to it later in the sketch. So slider equals and then I'm going to do create slider. There. Now as we did with the button, first thing I'm going to do is just give it a name, which will be slider. I'm then going to give an X and Y position of where the slider is going to be in my sketch. So I think what I'm going to do is just put it up here kind of next to the button. Now the button is at 50-50, so 50X, and then it's 75 across, so that would put me at about 125. So I'm going to maybe start it out at 150 and I'll do a 50Y, and if I press play here, you see the slider appears. Now there's a default size here. I've kind of run out of room. It looks like it went a little far, so I'm gonna adjust the size of this as well, which I can do with these next two arguments. Um, so I am gonna maybe make it about 150 across, and then 32 down on the Y axis. And there you see that that shortens my slider a little bit there. Maybe I'll make it 200 so since I got a bit more room to work with. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now the next thing, since this is a slider, um, it's going to have mm, room for a lot of different values depending on where I am on the slider going from left to right. So in this case, I am just going to... I can give it a minimum and a maximum value. So I'm going to do a minimum value of zero. I'm going to do a maximum value of the width of the canvas for this. So now I have this slider. And what I can do is I'm going to use this for the x-axis of my ellipse. So I'm just going to go here for 200. And I'm just going to go slider.val. So this is the name of the slider object which I created here and when I put dot val the dot val method is going to just access the value of the slider depending on where the slider is on the x-axis so if it's all the way to the left it's going to be zero as I defined there if it's all the way to the right it's going to be this width variable which in this case is 400 and uh, in the middle would be about 200 and everywhere in between so now I press play and I move the slider from left to right, and the ellipse moves with it. And that is really all there is to making a slider and accessing the value of the slider. Um, I can still click this button here, but uh, that is all there is to it. So, um, yeah, there are a few other methods you can do with the slider, um, which I'm not going to get too deep into here, but if we check out some of these object types and go to the slider documentation, um, you can look into some of that. So the dot val we just did there. There's also is changed. So that just means if we click the slider and we change it, um, we can have something happen in addition to that. Uh, we can sort of set the minimum and maximum later on. Um, another thing just that you 
may want to do is you can initialize the slider value. So when we start it, it's almost always going to start in the middle. Uh, but say you want it to start somewhere else. You want to maybe have it start right at zero or a different value. So you can just initialize that value by doing slider.val equals and then setting the value in setup. And then when you press play, it will automatically start there. But you can still then just change it. So if you need to initialize the value for something other than whatever the middle of your range would be, that would be how you do it. Um, so one quick thing I'm also going to show you here is this is a horizontal slider. We can also make vertical sliders uh, fairly easily. So what you would need to do to do that is you would just do slider and then a V, capital V there. Um, and really all you need to do is just make sure that the um, X and Y width and height of your slider are fitting so that it's going to be kind of bigger in the height than it is in the width. So in this case, uh, I'm going to move this over to maybe 300x. So I want my slider to start here. And then I'm going to make it 32 that way and 200 that way. So now you see that my slider is going up and down. Um, I'm just going to change this to height, even though it would be the same. I don't want to initialize my slider at zero anymore, or I can get it at zero. But I think here now, instead of my slider for the x value, I'm going to do a slider dot val for the y value of this. And there you see it starts at zero. Now this is a little weird because you'll see it starts at zero when this is down here, but it, the circle's on the top, so it's kind of moving opposite of my slider. So if you're going to do something like that, you just kind of want to keep in mind you can change just the values. So the first value is going to be the high value, and the second value is going to be the low value for my vertical slider here. So now it's at the top, and then I can slide it down like that. And I could initialize this uh, at 400 or initialize it at height so the circle starts at the bottom like that and then I move it up. But that is how we make sliders using the Touch GUI library, uh, both vertical and horizontal.